Hello, Max Voltage here. And recently I changed out a GPU fan on my Gigabyte Gaming OC RTX 4090. Why did I change it out? Well, it wasn't moving anymore. Basically it had a wobble to it. So when it would try to spin up, it would wobble too fast and the GPU would figure this out and just stop the fan from spinning at all. So that, fan, that GPU was running a bit hotter, but was still usable, especially given the cold weather we've had over the winter. But now we're starting to head into spring. And just yesterday, I had my vast rig have nothing rented on it, which is unusual. So I thought I would take advantage of it and make the change out of the fans. Now, before I get into that, a couple of things I wanted to mention. The goal of this project was to change out the fan without removing the heat sink from the PCB. That was the goal. Asus is really good about this, but Gigabyte and some of the other brands, not so much. You have to like remove it completely. And even in this case, if you removed it from the PCB, it still would have been difficult with the way that it's configured. So that's goal number one. Well, that's really just the main goal. Now, before I go into and show you what I did, the GPU fans that I got was from a website called gpureplacementfans.com. I've gotten fans from them a number of times and always gotten them. It usually takes about a week to arrive. They come from China or Hong Kong, depending on where they have stock. And, and I've always gotten them and they're always the right fans. Sometimes when I get things from Amazon, I'm think I'm getting the right fan, but I end up getting the wrong fan. It's great because you can just return it, but you can't always find the right fans on Amazon. So I've just decided this is just the easiest place to get it from. Just need to be patient in getting them because like I said, it takes about seven days to get them. One other thing I did is I ordered a toolkit with a flexible extender. The flexible extender did absolutely nothing for me, but what it did give me was a screwdriver with a narrower shaft, which was able to allow me to get a, a better angle to the screws than my iFixit kit, would, which has a screwdriver with a thicker, th thicker shaft. So that worked out really well. It was Titan. I forget what the number is, but it, like I said, it came with a flexible extender. And then it was great because it was from AutoZone. It was literally just a couple miles away, set it for pickup picked it up and just drove back home. So it made it pretty easy. So without further ado, let me show you what we did. All right, well, we're here for a little project. This fan is wobbly. I think it was that one. Yeah, it's definitely, this fan has got wobble to it. And especially you can feel it that way. You can see it that way. So yeah, it's wobbly. Maybe you can see it better from this angle. But anyway, bottom line is it was not moving. So I have the replacement fans, but I'm hoping I don't have to take the heat sink off. So let's take a look at the underside. So there are six screws and I do have a right angle screwdriver. So I don't know if you can see it down there, but there's one screw. There is two screws. And there's the other screw. There's another screw. There's another screw, but we have one problem. This one over here on this corner, you can't even see it, but there's a screw down there and you have this flange in the way. So we're going to attempt to Dremel this piece off so we have access to that screw. This Dremel does nothing except for aesthetics and it blocks part of the heat sink anyway. So it'd be better if it wasn't there. So we're gonna do that and we'll see how we do. All right, so we cut off the edge, that little thing that came out here and over, no reason for it other than for whatever aesthetics 
gigabyte thought were good. But now we should be able to get at that screw that's right down there with a the right angle screwdriver. So we're gonna try that next. Thanks, honey. These little holes, I did get the screws out of all these corner holes, but man, it was difficult because the angle was like this and the extension that I got, you know, it's, you know, by the time you get the bit in it, it's not, there's no bend. So it really, this, this, this thing, not really effective, unfortunately, just cause it doesn't bend close enough to where the bit is. So, but I did manage, I thought we stripped one of them, but we did manage to get it out even at an angle. So it'll be interesting getting them back in. But for right now, we're in good shape to change out the fans. Okay, and as I said, this one is the one that's got the huge wobble to it. And we'll not, see how as soon as you start spinning it fast, it just immediately slows down because of the wobble. These on the other hand, still spin freely. That's the one I'm gonna be taking out. I'll take out the three screws on this side and then I'll pull the wire through. Cause on the other side, it still has this bracket. In fact, let me just pull this off and show you that bracket. This bracket goes all the way across. So I don't particularly want to try to take this bracket off to pull the fan out this way. So we'll just figure out a way to get the wire out and then put the fan back in. So be back in a bit. I did get it in, basically reconnected it here cause that's what this was like actually. This fan is the one that was taken out. See, it's just got a couple of short connectors so it just connects right into there. So not too much rewiring. I didn't need to pull anything out of the actual board itself, which is nice. So that's a real nice getting it back in a position. Just had to be a little careful about getting this wire from here, running it that direction when I was mounting the three screws to mount the fan in place. But really, once I get to this point, actually really easy. It's just getting to this point. Asus cards are just so much easier to replace fans on because you don't have to remove the heat, don't have to remove the heat sink from the PCB in order to replace the fans on the Asus cards I have had. All right, let me see if I can get these screws back into place. Oh, one thing I did forget to mention was I did have to take off the front faceplate in order to get to that one screw, at least have a little bit better angle at that one screw. So let's see, I'll put all the screws back in and then put the faceplate, put the faceplate back on. Okay, so I've got that one that I'm not putting a screw in. I got that screw in. This one's a real tough one as well. That's the one I had all kinds of problems with. I'm gonna leave that one out too. And then the three on the other side, here, I'll just turn it around real quick. Bear with me here one second. That one I got in again. That one, that one wasn't difficult. It's not got a nice little cut out here, so you got a pretty good angle at it. Here, let me turn this into the light. I also have that one in and that one in. So now I just have to put the front cover back on and then stick it back into my Octa server and make sure that fan works. Okay, the front's on. Got all the screws in there. Got the screw in there, as well as right there. And then only thing is, it's got a little bit of give in the corner, but I mean, it's ever so slight. If I wasn't looking for it, I wouldn't even know it. So I'm sure it's fine. Plus it's gonna be down this way. I would be a little bit more nervous if it was the top ones that were out, but I've got all three top ones in and the one in the middle on the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and put this thing into place and make sure the fan is spinning. Oh, and I did forget, there's the two extra screws. So we'll hang on to those for safekeeping. Those are the two screws I did not intentionally put in, but all the other screws are in. And after all that, I went ahead and put the GPU back in the Octo server and it worked great. Fans were spinning, no issue whatsoever. Overnight got picked back up by a job that rented out all six GPUs. So I was really happy about that. And I checked the fans still spinning 
and the temps definitely are running at a much better temperature on that particular GPU. So we're in really good shape. So successful project. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, or even if you didn't, you feel like subscribing, please hit the like button and subscribe below. And for future content, stay tuned for more content like this. I do have another uh, video coming up where I'm going to be showing how I fixed a 4090 Founders Edition that was overheating. So stay tuned for that one. All right, guys, have a good day. The General is out.